Hi family and friends, welcome back to Gary in the Kitchen. I'm Gary. Today we're going to be making a childhood favorite of mine. My dad's meatballs and spaghetti is my take on it, but it is inspired by my dad, Leon. My dad's meatballs and spaghetti was loved by our whole family, not only his immediate family, but all of my aunts and uncles and cousins from far and wide always loved daddy's meatballs and spaghetti. So that's what we're going to do in the kitchen today. I hope you'll join me and we'll have a lot of fun. guys let me tell you what uh, the ingredients are that I'm using it's really really basic and simple the meatballs are going to be extremely simple they're not extravagant I'm not adding a lot of this that and the other to it um, but for the meatballs I have like two pounds of ground beef I have one pound of sweet Italian sausage and I'm going to mix those together um, my seasonings are my Italian seasonings um, Italian seasoning and oregano uh, tomato and basil these are my favorite seasonings when I cook Italian food I have six tablespoons of butter here and this is the first thing we're going to mix up is the butter for the garlic bread okay so I have six teaspoons of butter I have salt and pepper I have a one pound box of regular spaghetti um, I have garlic I have two onions because when I make the sauce I want lots of onion, I want lots of garlic, okay? I have tomato paste, I have three cans of diced tomatoes, and I have one can of tomato sauce, and I have freshly grated Parmesan cheese, okay? Um, if you like your tomato sauce chunky, you can leave your diced tomatoes, or if you use fresh tomatoes and you chop them and you wanna leave it chunky, that's fine. I like mine. Um, a little more on the smooth side it can have some chunkiness to it but I prefer it a little bit more smooth so I have my immersible blender to do that at when that time comes uh, if you don't have an immersible blender if you have a fruit processor or a blender you, you can uh, smooth out your sauce in there so I'm gonna set the meat aside for just a moment and I'm gonna get the butter again I'm one of those that don't measure <laughs> so if it is I recommend that you um, start on your smallest measurements on depending on what you know, like this I would probably start at a quarter teaspoon of uh, the seasonings but I'm just uh, a pinch and chunk kind of guy so I uh, just a couple pinches of Italian seasonings here and same thing with the tomato and basil and oregano okay a couple pinches like that and a pinch of black pepper and a pinch of salt and I'm going to put one garlic clove in there I guess I should already have these broken apart, but I didn't think that far ahead. But it won't take me just a minute. I have my garlic press, so this is a handy dandy kitchen tool. If you don't have one, and invest in one. Save you a lot of frustration. <laughs> uh, yes, it will. So Got the garlic peeled and into the press it goes and then on top of the butter just like that right there 
and all said and done. I'm gonna get a fork, gonna mix it all together, smash it all together, like one. The reason I'm making this ahead is because I want all this flavor to get in the butter. So when you spread it on the bread and you toast it in the oven and it seeps into the bread, you just have all this really, really, really wonderful flavor. And it gives the time for the garlic to get in there as well. I'm gonna put just a little pinch of Parmesan in there. And this is it for the butter for the bread. Of course, I have the baguettes here that I'll slice open and, and baste with the butter. Alrighty. This is done now, so we will set it aside until we're almost ready to eat. Because this will be the last thing we make uh, before we sit down to eat, okay? Alrighty, guys. At this time, we're going to um, make our meatballs. Um, it's going to be quite simple. I, I don't add a lot of extras to it. I just really season the meat and make the balls. Uh, but like I said, I have about two pounds of, of, of ground beef. And then I have a pound of sweet Italian sausage. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to season the ground beef. Oh, also, um, clean hands is the best kitchen utensils you can ever have. But for the sake of the show, I'm going to wear latex gloves. Um, so if you want to wear gloves... In your kitchen, that's fine. If you don't, then that's fine too. It's your kitchen, right? So, we're going to start with uh, our, our Italian seasoning. I'm just going to sprinkle it on there. Let me open the other end and get more out of it. There we go. And then this is the tomato, basil, and oregano. I have just a little bit in this jar, so I have another full jar of those seasonings just in case I run out. So they're both the same. Put it in there. And we're gonna do a little salt and pepper. Alrighty, just like this. And I'm gonna just kind of toss the ground bead. I'm I'm just not to kind of get the seasoning mixed in there, and then I'm gonna put the sausage in it and then we'll make the meatballs we'll mix it really good now like this toss it together with the beef and we'll mix it You know, there's always mishaps that goes on in the kitchen. A lot of, a lot of the bloopers we cut out. I've already had a couple uh, since we started filming this episode, so it's quite funny. So someday maybe we will um, do a bloopers episode when we get enough to make a film on it. Okay. Alrighty. So I got the sausage and the hamburger meat all mixed together here. So I went and bought me a scooper just for my meatballs. Don't have to take the gloves off, guys. Okay. And we will do the meatballs. And if you make more meatballs than you need for your sauce, you can always freeze them. Use them later and make you some meatball subs or meatball pizza make you some more sauce <laughs> alrighty guys we got the meatballs made and on the pan so I've got two good pans of meatballs and we're gonna put them in the oven. The oven's preheated to 425. We're gonna put them in the oven for 20, 25 minutes. You want to you want to cook the outer meat, get some brown on them, but not where they're cooked completely through because you want to put them in your sauce. 
and they'll finish cooking in your sauce and it helps season your sauce as well okay so we're gonna put them in the oven set the timer for 20 minutes alrighty and uh, now we're gonna make the sauce so I'm gonna cut up the onion and uh, I've went ahead and pressed my garlic so it's all ready to go and then we'll get the, the sauce started alrighty guys we're gonna make the sauce now um, my measurements for the sauce is lots of onion and lots of garlic <laughs> um, I'm doing I'm gonna chop up um, two medium to large onions. Um, and I went ahead and uh, minced up my six garlic cloves. Uh, so they're ready to go in the sauce. Uh, and then when I get the onions diced up, we'll move over to the stove to the, to the Dutch oven and we'll get the, the salsa going, okay? So here we go with the onions. So we're ready to um, start our sauce. We got our onions chopped. In your your pot, you need to put two tablespoons of olive oil, or if you reserve your bacon grease, a uh, couple tablespoons of your bacon grease, which is what I have in here. Um, go ahead and put the onion in. And that way, it will start it will start uh, sautéing and uh, getting translucent. And when it does start to getting translucent we will um, put in the garlic cook it for another minute and we will add our uh, herbs to it and get them mixed in real well where the oil releases and then we'll add the tomatoes okay hey guys so the onions have been uh, sauteing for um, a couple minutes now and they're starting to look translucent so I want to go ahead and get the seasonings in so I'm going to start with my uh, oregano tomato and basil. I think I'm going to have to break out the other jar. Yeah. Now remember when you're at this stage of it and you're seasoning, you're seasoning for the whole pot of sauce. So make sure you put enough seasonings in, but you don't want to overdo it. Um, if you're the type that have to have the measuring spoons um, with your herbs I would probably start with either a table or a teaspoon and just add until you think you have enough in there okay. go ahead and mix it up And then the heat and the steam from the onion sauteing is going to help release the oils of the herb. And it's going to go into your sauce. It's going to make it really, really nice. I'm going to add a little bit more of my um, oregano, tomato, and basil herbs. Like this. Okay. Salt and pepper time. So if you need to measure it, I would do like a half a teaspoon of black pepper, one, one and a half teaspoons of salt, because you can always add more later, okay? Never over season it to begin with. You can always add it to be on the safe side, okay? Alrighty, at this point, we're gonna add our garlic. Now, if you don't want your garlic minced, you want to use whole garlic just drop your garlic cloves in there or you can slice them or you can just smash them however you want to do it okay but then let that cook for just another minute or two more with the garlic in there so it becomes fragrant Well, 
you smell those herbs, huh? The garlic's starting to kick in. It smells wonderful. Uh, can imagine a Sunday afternoon in Tuscany, uh, an old grandmother. <laughs> Maybe I imagine of all things, I don't know. Also, I decided to add a fourth can of diced tomatoes because we got a lot of meatballs and they're kind of big, so I want to make sure I have enough sauce for the meatballs. Okay. All right, so at this time, I am going to um, add the tomatoes. the can of tomato sauce. Oops. All right, so we're gonna give it a stir, mix it up. Alrighty. We're gonna bring this to a simmer. And once it comes to a simmer and it's simmered for a little bit, we're gonna um emulsify it with the with the uh, emulsifier the handheld blender and kind of smooth it out a little bit okay so we will see you back in the kitchen at that time hey guys uh, the meatballs are ready uh, they actually roasted for 25 minutes on 425 here in the oven so I'm gonna pull them out and let them rest before we put them in the um, the meat sauce So as you can see, they shrunk a little bit. Uh, they released a lot of oil, so that's good. But they're done, but they're not done all the way through. And so they are going to go into the meat sauce and finish cooking and help flavor the meat sauce. All right, so we brought the sauce up to a simmer and uh, it's been simmering for about a good 15 minutes now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the heat down on it to where it uh, would be a low slow simmer um you know during your 15 minutes you'll probably have to stir it to keep it from sticking um, um but if you use a dutch oven never ever 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 whatever you cook never use a high heat on your dutch ovens especially your enamel ones um, because because of the enamel and the cast iron it holds its heat so if you're cooking on high you're cooking it at like probably two or three times the heat fracture that it really should be cooked on so always no probably no more than a medium high so at this point you want to kind of sample it taste it see if you need any more seasonings or anything like that Oh, sweet baby James, that's fabulous. That's delicious. That's delicious. Okay, but um, if you look, you can see how um, chunky the sauce is. I, if you like it like this, that's fine. That's your call. You can just leave it. If not, um, I recommend that you emulsify it. If you have these um, immersible um, blender, or if you have a blender or a food processor you can do it that way so we'll get started here we just gotten oh yeah we it's getting there um coarseness to it which is which i like which will help stick to your pasta <laughs> uh as you can see so go ahead and taste it again because you've worked the herbs in the sauce with the blenders and see if you need to add salt pepper Italian seasoning or any other seasonings that you use taste it and see if you need to add more nope I don't need to 
So if you do, this is the time to do it, okay? And at this time also, I am going to add a little bit of tomato paste to give it a little bit more thickness. And that is about three tablespoons of tomato paste, okay? Turn it down a little bit more. Also, if you have fresh basil, it's always wonderful to go here. I didn't pick any up in the store when I was getting the ingredients to make this because um, it just slipped my mind. But um, yeah, I'll cut you up, chop you up some fresh basil, and just before you serve it, and sprinkle you some fresh basil in there with your meatballs and stuff. Add a little bit more flavor and brightness to it. Okay, so we got the tomato paste um, mixed in. At this time is a step that I do to my sauce that my dad didn't do. Um, now my dad loved Parmesan cheese, but dad didn't put it in the sauce. So I'm going to put it, but I put it in my sauce. It gives it a little bit of a thickness and an added, an added flavor. Okay, so that's probably three quarters to a cup of shredded grated Parmesan cheese. Okay, mix it in. And when it gets mixed and melted, guess what's next? We're gonna add the meatballs. Alrighty. And so that's coming up next is adding the meatballs to the sauce. Alrighty guys, so we got the meatballs here. We're gonna put it in the sauce. Um, and then we're gonna let it simmer for a little while so the meat and the sauce can cook together. I'm probably gonna use all of these meatballs because I have I think I have enough sauce for it. So we're going to stir them all in there, like that. Of course, always scrape down your sides. Always scrape your bottom of your pot. Make sure it's not sticking. Okay. Then we're going to put it in there. And I'm going to say, let it simmer on low for at least 20 minutes. And that way... The meat and the sauce is able to combine and, and both give each other a wonderful flavor. And at that point, we will make the pasta. Hey guys, at this time we're going to cook the pasta. And we're going to put the garlic bread in the oven. Um, so I've got a big pot of hot water boiling, come to a boil. And I'm going to put some salt in it. We'll kind of make like salt water. Almost like beach water, like salty beach water. Also, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil in it probably a tablespoon or two. It helps the pasta from sticking together. Some people say don't put anything in it. Well, that's fine if you don't want to, but I like doing this. This is my method of doing it. And I'm just gonna put the pasta in there. There we go. Look at that. And cook it till it's al dente. Package says, woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, 10 minutes. Well, there we go. Stir it around to get it all submerged in the hot water while it's cooking. Also, when you're cooking pasta, whether it's 
spaghetti or some type of noodle. Um, you can always, you know, you can always bring it to the hard boil on high. But once you put your pasta in there, cut it down just a little bit. So, um, of course, not quite like on a full high temperature. Um, it was still boil. It was still cooking the same amount of time. It would just help with the splash overs and stuff. Okay, you know, of course, occasionally you stir it to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Alrighty. So, next up is plated and we shall eat meatballs and spaghetti. See you in a bit. Alright, so I have the, um, you remember the butter mixture that um, we mixed up at the beginning of the episode to put on the bread? So I have it um, on the bread and I topped it with some Parmesan cheese. I have the broil on in the oven and I'm going to put it in the oven. Just keep an eye on it until it's toasted and the cheese is kind of melted and the bread's not the toast, okay? Hey everybody. Hey. We're at the table now. We have the pasta and meatballs and sauce uh, plated up. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, Greg's there. That one's mine. Mm. Um, also the bread toasted with the melted parm, the melted parm on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be really good. It smells wonderful in the house. Yeah. In, it really in the does. apartment. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to give it a taste test mm -hmm. and see how well we did cooking today. Yeah. So we cheated, we ate, it. We ate a meatball earlier and they were really good before we put them in the sauce. We had to taste test it. I mean, really. Oh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Seasoned just right. You wouldn't like it. Well, mm. I mean, it's a matter of opinion, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm just being funny. Oh, no. They couldn't have any because they wouldn't like it. We're going to eat it. Uh. Mm. But it's really good. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I think my dad would be proud. Oh, yeah. I think so. I think he would. Yeah. My dad, he was he was a character. Um, he was a veteran. But my dad could tell a story. <laughs> I kid you not. He could be so good, it's convincing. And it could be about anything under the sun. He was a character. People loved him. He loved to laugh. He loved to have a good time. Um, so this was made in the memory of him and also I would like to send out um, best wishes and hang in there and uh, take your treatments and get better to my friend Xavier Cervantes uh, he is in Dallas uh, starting some cancer treatments um, tomorrow so I wish him well and uh, you just start you. sashaying down them halls there boy and let them know that you're going to beat this because I'm behind you 100% Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Also, um, we're going to do our first giveaway. We've not done that before, so this is quite new. Um, I had a reaction. You have to watch the video to know the answer. I had a reaction um, or an exclamation or, or a, a wow moment um, when I was cooking the sauce. It happens to be the title of a song. So the... Um, contest is or the giveaway is um, you have to email the title of the song and the artist who sings it okay you may have to watch it two or three times but to enter the contest you have to tell me the name of the song and the artist who sings it and it will be put in a drawing you have until next Friday the what is next Friday the 27th mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. to email your answers to Gary in the kitchen at yahoo.com okay mm -hmm. and at, at, at 6 p.m. on Friday it's cut off and then we will go through all the emails and pull out everybody that um, answered correctly uh, with both 
the two part answer the title and the artist um, so do that let's have a little fun and we promise you we'll get you some cool kitchen gadgets okay um, so thanks for watching uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channels please do so uh, hit that give us a thumbs up give us comments um, also if there's like a recipe that you would like for me to try um, put, leave it in the comments uh, under the video and we'll research it and see what we can come up with and we um, pick you we might send you a prize <laughs> um, but in the email give your name um, your address uh, so we can mail you the prize um, we will um, reply to your email if you won okay uh -huh. there's only gonna be one winner okay again you have to give uh -huh. me the name of the song and the artist who sings it the original artist who sings it okay it's not hard if you listen you can get it right off the bat so um, a lot of us old schoolers will probably catch it right away but anyways the younger the younger generation maybe not so much but um, listen to it and um, and let us know because we want to have some fun um, we'll give I'll get you we'll get you some cool um, kitchen gadgets to go in your kitchen okay thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys have a are having a great weekend and I hope you have a great week coming forward um, We'll see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye now.